Chromethius, Chromethius, I always eat my pizza crust. Sorry, I couldn't think of anything that rhymes with Chromethius. Besides the point, Chromethius is back, everybody. Yay! Woohoo! Before we continue, this video is brought to you by World of Tanks. If you live under a rock and haven't heard of this game yet, World of Tanks is a team-based MMO dedicated to mid-20th century armored tank combat. You can choose from a wide range of tanks and find a play style that works for you. Stealthily take out enemies from afar or rush in with lots of firepower. The game has over 40 battle arenas, so there's tons of diverse terrain to scale while you devise strategic battle plans with your teammates and blast your way to victory. As you gain more and more experience, you can buy upgrades and modifications so you can buff your tank to the max and dominate the battlefield. Gamers with a keen eye for historic accuracy will also appreciate the authenticity of all the tanks and the attention to detail that keeps the models true to the originals. World of Tanks is free to play and free to win, so you only win battles using skill, not money. Of course, free online games are accessible to people of all skill levels, and with 100 million players on board, there's no shortage of epic matches and opportunities to interact with the global community of tank-loving gamers. You can play the game right now by clicking on the link in the description, which includes an invite code that'll get you seven premium days, 500 gold, and a premium tank, the T127. Join in on the fun and start playing World of Tanks today. Very excited to be bringing this project back from the grave. It has been many months, maybe like three, four months maybe, since I actually touched this thing. Uh, there were a bunch of delays with parts that were coming in because that's when COVID had just hit. And then we moved into this new studio, which obviously took a lot of time and distracted me from projects like this. But now we're back and I'm really excited to be jumpstarting it once again. So just to give you a quick recap, a quick update, or maybe you're just new and you have no idea what this build is or what's inside of it. Uh, this is gonna be my editing workstation build. I always said that I would never have a custom water-cooled system as my go-to uh, sort of daily system for, for work especially, but here I am. I don't know what happened between now and then to make me change my mind. I think I'm taking this as an opportunity to really maintain this system properly, something that I haven't always been the best with with previous custom water-cooled builds that I've used. So uh, hopefully, you know, the fact that I'll be using it as a daily will encourage and motivate me to take care of it properly. And of course, I'll be bringing you guys along for that journey as well. Now, briefly recapping the specs here, this is an AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3 system. So uh, we have a TRX 40 motherboard, the Asus ROG Strix Zenith 2 Extreme. Uh, this is their flagship TRX 40 board on that chipset. It's an absolute animal. I mean, just look at that freaking VRM solution uh, with active cooling, multiple fans. Look at just the power connectors for the CPU and motherboard and gosh darn it the system's going to need all that power because we've got a 3970x at the core of the system uh, pun intended this is a 32 core 64 thread cpu i really wanted to go with the 3990x and get 64 cores in here but that costs a lot of money didn't really want to spend three or four grand on a single component and it's not the type of product that amd is just readily handing out to anyone who asks so 32 cores will have to do for now yes have to do oh woe is me that's alongside 64 gig of Thermal Take Tough RAM. This is not the RGB version, I just went with the more subdued non-LED variant because uh, there's not really gonna be much RGB inside of the system. I might have some uh, some white LEDs just to accentuate things, but I'm gonna try to keep it pretty minimal on the RGB spectrum. Uh, but this is really nice RAM. Unfortunately, it only comes in eight gigabyte modules. I would have loved to get 128 gigs in here, but 64 gigs will have to do. These are pretty fast modules though, with a speed of 4,000 mega transfers per second. Uh, definitely, definitely on the faster side of DDR4. So very excited to be using that kit as well. For our graphics card, we have an Asus ROG Strix RTX 2080 Ti Gaming OC. So it's got a custom PCB, which is why we've also got a custom water block from EK to fit this exact model of GPU. And right now, this is still the fastest gaming GPU on the market, but it will soon be replaced and dethroned by another NVIDIA card, the RTX 3080 or 3080 Ti or 3090 or 3090 Ti. Whatever NVIDIA comes out with, it's probably gonna be faster than this card. And that's gonna be kind of unfortunate. The uh, consequences of having waited this long to get this project finished uh, is that now some of the hardware is going to be outdated pretty soon. But I'm taking that as an opportunity to maybe do a revamped Chromethius V2, like a version 2.0, once the 3000 series uh, Ampere GPUs from NVIDIA come out, then we can maybe swap that out. I also have some ideas on how I already want to change. It's been, since it's been like four months since I really touched this build, I've been thinking about like Oh, like would I want to swap these radiators out at some point with those really cool chromed finish 
heat killer radiators that would match perfectly. And I've got some other ideas in the works too, but maybe I'll save that for when the Ampere GPUs are finally here. So 2080 Ti, beautiful card for now. And we've also got this lovely distro plate from Lian Li and EK that's gonna make running our tubes and routing our tubes so much easier. More on that later, really quick one to talk about storage. So I did have the M.2, or I'm sorry, the DIM.2 module here from a really cool little feature from Asus. You've got basically this like DIM module that uh, actually has two M.2 PCIe Gen 4 slots on it. So you could raid that as well. Originally, I was gonna use this, have two two terabyte NVMe drives here, PCIe Gen 4 drives, giving us four terabytes there of just working storage for all of our footage when I'm editing. But then I realized I wanted to step things up a bit. So instead of using this, we're now gonna be using this ridiculous card from Asus. This is their Hyper M.2 by 16 Gen 4 card. This slots into a PCIe by 16 slot, and it has four M.2 PCIe Gen 4 slots on it, giving us a total of 256 gigabits per second of bandwidth. It's absolutely insane, and we are gonna be fully populating this with four Corsair MP500 PCIe Gen 4 NVMe M.2 drives. Uh, and these are each two terabytes, giving us a total of eight terabytes on this single card. I'm probably gonna raid them, uh, or I'm definitely gonna raid them, uh, just software raid, maybe raid five, that way we can still get a good majority of our capacity there, only, we'll only be down one drive, so still uh, six terabytes of working storage, and then if a drive should fail, then the parity bits that are spread out across the other drives will be able to rebuild any of the lost data once I replace the dead drive. So that's where we're headed with storage, and of course I'm gonna have one additional M.2 drive. I think it's already mounted underneath this plate here, I think it's just a one terabyte MP600 that will be used as our C drive. So in total, it'll be a seven terabyte system with redundancy as well. So now that you're up to speed on where we're at with Chrometheus, we can start talking about what we're doing today. If you guys recall, this is gonna be a metal tubing system. I've never worked with metal tubing before, so it's gonna be a fun learning experience for me. This is one of the tubes that we're gonna be using. You can see that they are already pre-bent. They shipped pre-bent because it's really near impossible to bend metal tubes unless you have the proper tools for it, which I do not. Now I could just start measuring in cutting this and hope for the best, but that's a little bit risky because I actually didn't buy enough metal tubing to make any mistakes. I only bought enough for the build, assuming that everything goes perfectly and I don't F up anything. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually cut and measure all of our runs. I'm gonna create all of our runs with PTG tubing first. And then once I have those individual pieces, I'll use them as a template for cutting our metal piping exactly where it should be. That's probably as far as we're gonna get today because I still have to clean these tubes thoroughly. Unlike PET tubing, metal tubing comes with all this crap and filth inside of it that needs to be washed out and cleaned thoroughly. So that's gonna take some time. We'll have to save that for a future video, but at least for now, we'll be able to get started making our runs with this stuff. I would have actually been able to do this a lot sooner, like months and months ago, but I was still waiting on our monoblock for the motherboard, which I didn't have yet. There were still tremendous delays with COVID just hitting. So uh, I was waiting on this and I couldn't really, without this water block or the monoblock, I really couldn't tell exactly where our runs would be because I wasn't sure exactly the positioning of the inlet and outlet on this particular piece. But now that we have it, uh, this is from EK, by the way, this is their EK Quantum Momentum, which is uh, just a, an absolute beast. This is ridiculously heavy. I mean, if you think about it, it's gonna have to span this massive CPU as well as the VRM area. So it's a, it's a, beefy, it's a beefy boy. But now that we have it, we can get started start bending some tubes and actually make some serious progress today. Let's do it.
Yeah, progress. Look at that. First real progress that we've made in four friggin' months, and it's looking beautiful. But some things to note first. GPU is sagging like a mother effer. So you can see that I've got this piece of scrap tubing here just temporarily to hold it up because I couldn't really figure out the runs and, and measure and cut for the runs unless the GPU is nice and straight. Otherwise, my measurements would be off. So propped it up. It's perfectly straight now, but it looks terrible because this stupid piece of tubes here. So I need to get a bracket. A proper sag bracket needs to happen at some point. Maybe I can find a chrome one that'll match the rest of the build. That would be sweet. If you guys have any ideas for what I could use, feel free to share it down below in the comments. Also, I am missing fittings. As I was doing my runs and measuring stuff, I realized that I don't have certain fittings that I need to complete this loop. So you can see here that some of these tubes aren't even connected to anything. Like this guy right here, which is why I've, I've propped it up with a little tube, uh, just so it can be parallel and give you guys an idea of what it's actually gonna look like. But uh, this tube right here, coming from the distro plate to the GPU, also doesn't have anything to connect to, which is why it's also being held up by a piece of scrap tubing. So I need to get a couple more fittings, particularly the offset fittings. Here's an example of an offset fitting coming straight out of the monoblock. I think it offsets the port by six millimeters, I wanna say. They come in different sizes. I think this one's six millimeters, but don't quote me. I need to get two more of those, or I'm sorry, three more of those. I'm gonna stack two of them together, giving us, I think, 12 millimeters of uh, of, of offset. So it's gonna go from this port right here on the distro plate. We're gonna stack two of them so that it can meet this tube perfectly. I've already tested it out with the two offset fittings I do have and that measurement checks out and stuff. And then the other offset fitting is gonna go at this, uh, at this port right here coming from the distro plate once again to connect to this pipe that goes to the GPU because you can see that the pipe is in between these two ports and it's, uh, it's not really connecting perfectly with either one. So once that's there, it should align perfectly and everything will be awesome. Also, look at this friggin Vera monoblock. It's insane. It's absolutely crazy. It's, it's beautiful. The pictures online don't do it justice. What you're seeing now on camera doesn't do it justice. It is gorgeous. I can't speak highly enough about this thing. Of course, we'll have to see what the temperatures are like once we get it up and running, but I am hopeful. I have every bit of confidence that this thing's going to perform like a champ. Uh, I, it just, it looks so good. It's huge too. I mean, this motherboard, Zenith 2 Extreme is already a massive board. And look at how much this monoblock fills up. It's it's the biggest monoblock I, I think I've ever worked with in a system before. So it's got the, the weight to boot too. Like the weight matches how big it looks. It is extremely heavy. You could kill a man with it, which uh, I guess is a, that's a feature. Down here, you can see I've installed our Asus Hyper M.2 PCIe Gen 4 by 16 card, but it's just for show right now. I don't actually have any M.2 drives installed, just wanted to see how it would look in the rest of the system, and it matches perfectly. I think it's going to be a great addition, both visually and functionally. Can't wait to actually take that for a spin. Ooh, those speeds are going to be ridiculous. And finally, just circling back to the tubes, I'd love to get your guys' opinion, what you think of it so far. Personally, I think it looks great, and, and really, I could probably just leave it like this, just use PET tubing, put some distilled water in here, and call it a day. We would be completely done moving on to the next build. But I promised myself that I was going to do metal tubing for this build, and I really want to see that through. As, as much as it would work right now, I kind of just want to cross off metal tubing off my bucket list and really have that experience under my belt. So we're going to go forward with that. Uh, I also think it's just going to take things to the next level in terms of the design language of the build and really drive home the, the whole Chrometheus theme. So yeah, I couldn't be more excited about how things are looking so far. And I hope you guys are too. So let me know what you think. Toss a like on this video and get subscribed for more tech content on the way, as well as more updates on this big old sucker. I think the next video we do on Chrometheus will be the final video because all we really need to do is swap out the tubes for metal tubes, fill it up and you know bleed the loop and stuff, which shouldn't be too bad. Apart from that guys, check out our store, bitwit.tech. We've got a lot of stuff there. If you see anything you like, feel free to pick it up. It's a great way to help support us and what we do here at Bitwit. Apart from that guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one and I'll see y'all in the next video. Pew.